Hi, I'm Kay, and it's Off the Shelf Book Talk with Book Lovers today, and I'm here with my co-host, Elizabeth Nelson, and we're going to talk about our favorite thing to do, reading and books. And so, Betsy, let's start. What have you been reading? <laughs> well, I just finished um, Julie Kramer's series, uh, Riley Sparts. Oh, yeah, um, I interviewed her one time. You did. Um, her The last one in this series is called Delivering Death. Was it good? It was very good. And part of it centers around a huge, they're filming a movie at the Mall of America mm. with a mass wedding. <laughs> that sounds like a... <laughs> Recipe for disaster. <laughs> yep. So there, and it was it was really interesting, and just it's kind of fun to hear them talk about. I mean, it, since they're set in Minnesota and they're talking <laughs> about the Mall of America and they're talking about like the little wedding chapel, and so then in your brain you're going, okay, I know where that is. It's up on the third floor, and and it's just hearing them talk about, you know, like in the books, I think it's still called Snoopy. Camp Snoopy. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, that is so, fun when you can mm -hmm. connect with those landmarks yes. and, and you know where they are and you think, oh, yeah, I know where that is. Yeah. So, no, it was it was really good. I thought it was a really, I'm pretty sure it's the end of the series from how kind of everything was wrapped up with a nice little bow on top, which was really nice. I um, always like things to be wrapped up. I don't yes. like to be left hanging. <laughs> yeah. So that was nice. Um, I also read... Uh, by Doris Kearns Goodwin. I read Team Arrivals, The Political Genius of Abraham Lincoln, um, which is the basis for the movie Lincoln. So that was really interesting. It is an interesting mm -hmm. book. And, yes. and mm -hmm. she writes in an interesting way, mm -hmm. like historical fiction, even yeah. though it's true, mm -hmm. but it's readable. Yeah. It's not like a lot of facts that you get hung up on. Mm -hmm. and yep, and I listened to the audiobook version of this and the... Doris did the intro. You and had that work. All I got to say is that I was very happy that she did not read the rest of the book. <laughs> because who, who else read the rest um, of the book? Was it was it? a different, it was a gentleman. I don't remember what his name was, but he did a really nice job. But she, you know, there are some authors apparently that just should not read their own books. <laughs> you, know, you know what I found really interesting about that book was, mm -hmm. was, the end when they kind of wrap up a lot of things mm -hmm. going on because you have John Wilkes Booth who shoots Lincoln mm -hmm. going on. Meanwhile, you have what several cabinet members attacked mm -hmm. and literally they shut down Washington mm -hmm. and they kind of do this all points bulletin. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this is over 150 years ago. I yeah. mean, they don't have the internet. They don't have text messaging. They don't have mm -hmm. all these instant ways we communicate today. Mm -hmm. And imagine mm -hmm. what we would do if the president was assassinated and several cabinet members were attacked. Yeah. Well, and it was, it was interesting too, just because, it, you know, the whole book is pretty much about Abraham Lincoln and how he interacted with his other cabinet members and how different they all were. And it was just very interesting to see how they do that because, I mean, the whole time the one guy is just like, oh, I hate this. I'm going to run for president. Da, 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 da. And then, well, this would come out. And then he's like, oh, I didn't know anything about this. And it's like, you did. But it, it's, it's an interesting um, book because, you know, the, the conventional wisdom would be you would not want your competitors mm -hmm. to be in business with you and Lincoln put that aside and picked the best people to do the job and I think Obama President Obama followed kind of the same thing when he named people in his cabinet and I think Lincoln went with the idea know your enemies and keep your know your friends and yeah. keep your enemies keep closer your friends close and your enemies closer yeah, yeah I think that's but <laughs> have you ever been to the Lincoln um Museum in Springfield, Illinois. No. That is a fantastic <laughs> place, and I say that because it's so interesting because there is a room set up like a cabinet meeting. Oh, yeah. So you can see, you know, with wax, mm -hmm. but I mean really realistic, you know, all these men sitting around the table, and they're all in how I would assume they advocated their positions. Mm -hmm. So if that was that's really, really interesting. Yeah. Well, and I thought it was... The part that I thought was interesting for me is there were parts where I rec I remembered them from the movie Lincoln, and I was like, oh, well, this is kind of how I, you know, I can follow it along, even though it had, 
I mean, it's you know you know how any book about Abraham Lincoln is going to end. Yeah, badly. <laughs> um, no matter how much you'd wish, they'd kind of change, but. It was really, yeah, I really enjoyed it. The thing with the museum that's cool, too, is they do, they've got a, a room with a Civil War map, mm -hmm. and it's Civil War in five minutes. And you literally see all the armies move and all this yeah. stuff. And then in another room, they have Tim Russert, the late uh, mm -hmm. announcer, who's handicapping the presidential election with Lincoln oh. of the 1860s. So you mm -hmm. have all these familiar talking heads that we're used to seeing talking about the political, um, the presidential race of 1860. Mm -hmm. And that is a cool thing because it puts it really into context because it's people we're familiar with. And yeah. so it's, it's a cool, cool museum if you ever get a chance, but I recommend it to everybody because mm -hmm. there's theaters and they've got like rumble seats like you sit and when the, bo when the Civil War battles are going on, the seats shake. Oh yeah. Like you're in an <laughs> explosion. So it's cool. And they also have some hologram stuff. That's okay. pretty cool. It's a very cool place. Yeah. I've Especially been... if you're a Lincoln fan. <laughs> we don't have any Civil War fans in our family. None. <laughs> um, any th Let's see, what else have I read? I read a couple more books in the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Moss. Um, I've got this one and then this one, and I'm done. So I have two books left in the series. And Is that just, are you sad? It's one of those things where you want to find out what happens, but mm -hmm. at the same time, you don't want to find out because then the book's going to be over. And I mean, I already had that with um, another series that she wrote. The main three books were sort of the main story, and then she's going to kind of expound on this universe, but it was like, oh, I finished this. <laughs> I, want to go, I want to go back and read them for the first time. Well, my question to you is, are there any standalone books beside Team of Rivals? Everything seems to be a series these days. Well, every breath from Nicholas Sparks is <laughs> <laughs> yes, That's true. That's true. So there's um, a few. Yeah, I know. There just seem to be a lot. And it's one of those things for me where it's like I download a book because it sounds interesting. And then I find out once either how it ends or you discover it's the beginning of a series. Yeah. And I've, lately, it seems that just about every book I've written or read um, has, is a series. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like, on one hand, that's, I really like that because if I like the characters, it's yeah. like I want more. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it's sort of like, <clears throat> why? Because they sell. I get that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, some, <coughs> and I think it's some people, you know, you get to know a lot of characters like family if you yeah, read that's them true. for a really long time. So. You're inviting them into your home. You are. You jump into their book for a couple of hours well, and then right, come or back. a couple so. of days or a couple yeah. of weeks if there's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So I read, so those... Um, Last time we were here, too, I talked about the Finishing School series, which yes. was the finishing school for, girl, for girls that also doubled as turning them into spies. And I finished, yes, I finished yes. that series. Okay. So um, it was really just kind of a fun, light read. I mean, it's kind of nice to read those books that aren't super, you don't have to think <laughs> <laughs> about <laughs> what's happening every two pages. You can just kind of enjoy the book and... So now, Betsy, what was that series that I asked you about the other day that I, we all read about that girl? It was the Enchanted Ink books oh, by that's Shana, right. Sh Shana Swenson, I oh, believe it those, is. Oh, you know, I'm going to reread those because, <laughs> what is there, six or seven in the series? I think there's six. I actually haven't read all six oh. myself. But um, for those who aren't familiar with these books, Enchanted Ink is about a woman who lives in New York City. She moved there from Texas. And she has not a single drop of magic in her blood in her, anywhere. And she goes to work for a magic mm -hmm. enchantment company. <laughs> yeah, that's true. As, and helps them see because everybody else can be fooled by stuff and she can't be tricked by magic. And so it's everything that happens. She works for Merlin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she does. That's yep. who runs the company. She she goes out into Central Park with her friends kissing frogs looking for a prince. Yes, that's, yes, that's true. That's true. So I mean, they're just they're just really good. I love those books. Mm -hmm. They're easy to read, they're fun. Katie's the main character mm -hmm. and Owen is the boy is the guy, Owen. Oh, and the boy she loves uh, mm -hmm. from afar, mm -hmm. who's like a super warlock. Yeah, but they have, they, I mean, even the titles are pretty great. There's, you know, Enchanted Ink, and then uh, Once Upon a Stiletto. Yep. Um, 
damsel under stress. Then there's a hex. Don't, for, don't hex with Texas. Texas. And then I don't remember the other ones, but those are the first four. At one and time, they were supposed to be either looking that they'd been optioned for a movie or oh, yeah. a television series. And I don't know. I don't. I've never hmm. seen anything, so I don't know that. No, I happened. haven't either. But but I'm going to go back and read those because those were fun, mm -hmm. charming books. Yep. I remember when we all read them the first time because it was like you had to track which family member had the book to book know when we it was were your reading, turn we were to like read it. inhaling them. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's always. It's. I mean, it's just kind of fun when, you know, like. All of us can agree on a book for once, because <laughs> well, it doesn't. It doesn't actually, always happen. <laughs> no, but those books were really fun, and we all liked them because mm -hmm. you girls were young then. I mean, mm -hmm. like like yeah. teenagers maybe. I think I was in high school when I read some and, of those. And and we were mm -hmm. middle aged. Grandma Nana, was a yeah. senior, and she. But every appealed to everybody, mm -hmm. across yeah. all age groups, and and it was just a fun, fun read. Mm -hmm. And like in the one book when she go she goes out on a date with this other guy and as they're having dinner it occurs to her that the person she's having dinner with may be just like her and that magic spells don't work on him so these two the two guys that she works with they come into the restaurant and they start making things happen like they start making stuff disappear and it starts snowing and driving this poor guy completely insane trying to figure out if he can see everything yeah, or not. that's right and nobody else in the restaurant is reacting to it at all yeah because he's a lawyer yeah he's yeah. a lawyer coming in and oh i just remember bursting out laughing yeah because you could just you can just picture it in your mind like this guy slowly thinking he's going into madness because she's not reacting to it and nobody else is and yeah, cause yeah. It, it's fun because isn't her best friend a fairy? Yes. Yeah, I think and there's there's a couple of them that are fairy. There's fairies and I mean yeah, her the boss in her department is a uh, he performs some kind try to do a spell on himself and now when he gets angry he turns into a troll yes, sort of turns right. bright green and <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna dig those out because yeah. those are fun. Mm -hmm. It's fun to find books like that. Anything else that you've read? Oh, you know, I always mm -hmm. fall back when I'm kind of in the, uh, my favorite books by Noel Barber, Tanamara, and mm -hmm. Farewell to France. Mm -hmm. Really great books about families, and they both take place in World War II. Mm -hmm. Farewell to France is about France during World War II, mm -hmm. and Tanamara is about uh, Singapore. Okay. And the Far East during the Second World War. And, and what I really like about them is Noel Barber was a foreign correspondent. Oh, okay. And so he actually reported for newspapers and did the nonfiction. And then after the war ended, he wrote fiction. Mm -hmm. So if you read his nonfiction books, they really are similar to his fiction books because <laughs> they're the same um, events. Yeah. And But the books are really, really great because he's such a great writer that you can, you know... When the bombs hit and the, you can smell the smoke and the distress of people and mm -hmm. the fear and, and when fireworks are going off, you can, mm -hmm. it's just, he's just a really great writer. He's written a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And, and, but those two, so I have Tanamara actually sitting on my end table next to my chair <laughs> and I started reading it and I'm in about 10 pages 20 pages in but it's like this thick and it's a book you know so I mean it yeah. isn't <laughs> it's a paperback too and it's an old paperback I bought when we were in England and I don't want the pages to fall out you know so it's like oh maybe <laughs> and they're not on Kindle otherwise oh, I'd probably yeah. just buy them yeah another book that that I really have and I saw it the other day in the bookcase, and I thought, oh, I maybe will reread that as Exodus by Leon Uris. Have you ever read Exodus? I don't think I read that one. Oh, it's a great book. It is a great, you know, these are books that are historical fiction mm -hmm. about true events and probably real people. Mm -hmm. And um, Exodus is about founding of Israel. Oh, okay. And it is such an amazing book. Uh, you know, how they, you know, the... Mm -hmm. years before and dealing with the British who had the mandate for Palestine mm -hmm. and then of course World War II and the Holocaust and then Israel's demand for their own mm -hmm. country and all the stuff that went in and, and what's really interesting is, is before they became a country 
they knew they were going to need things. They mm -hmm. needed arms and they needed um, just stuff to make, you know, all this stuff. So yeah. they would send engineers in the countries mm -hmm. and, and they would buy things and literally take them apart because they couldn't bring yeah. this stuff into Israel. So they'd smuggle in these pieces and rebuild these machines. Yeah. And I mean, it's just amazing to me. Um, Golda Meir, she was, you know, just, just this woman before she became um, prime minister of Israel and they needed money. And she literally took off for a um, fundraising drive in the United States with a dress on her back mm -hmm. and raised millions. Yeah. So it's, it's a really compelling story. The movie mm -hmm. is bad, bad, bad. <laughs> Don't watch the movie. <laughs> I mean, you will never convince me that Paul Newman is going to save Israel. So no, skip the movie, read the book. <laughs> that one I really, because I watched the movie not all that long ago, and I'm like, oh, dear God, who thought this was a good idea? You know? And that's like, nothing against Paul Newman. I like Paul Newman, but bad casting. <laughs> Sorry, Betsy, I shouldn't have worn it. <laughs> now you want to watch the movie, right? <laughs> well, I mean, the book is like this, you know, and the the movie is like let's dumb it down to i don't know what but you're just like hello did anyone even read this book <laughs> just you were so good and get such conviction who's how's paul newman gonna save his real <laughs> well i mean paul newman was being tied in the 60s but i know he wasn't even he couldn't save this movie <laughs> I mean, we're talking act of God, like parting the Red Sea would be required to save this movie. Oh, gosh. Oh. That's funny. You should really read the book, Betsy. Well, I'll have to borrow it from you sometime and read it. He's, he's, uh, Leon Euros wrote quite a number of books. He wrote uh, a lot of, he wrote Mile 18. He wrote uh, Treblinka. He wrote lot of Holocaust stuff. Mm -hmm. And then he also wrote some stuff about Ireland and the okay. uh, NRA, or not the NRA, no, the <laughs> IRA. <laughs> well, sorry. <laughs> Nothing against NRA here. <laughs> Get my initials screwed up. <laughs> I could cause yeah. a lot of trouble. <laughs> you, you. <laughs> oh, well. So, Betsy, what else have you read on a more serious <laughs> note? More serious note. Um, I started another, another series. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God for that. I hate for um, you to just have one I didn't know. Um, this one was called Cinder, and it's by Marissa Meyer. And it is, um, I think the whole series is going to be kind of that twisted fairy tale retelling. So Cinder, her name is Cinder Lee, and she lives in New Beijing. And she is a cyborg. Oh yeah, this is with a with a metal foot That's and hand and all kind of wiring going through her, and um, so it's kind of there's it's her kind of getting through life, and she has an evil stepmother, and she has two stepsisters, and she goes to the ball, and yeah, it's it's really it's interesting though because there's there's a more kind of to it, kind of. Uh, political intrigue kind of stuff playing in. There are people that live on the moon that come down and are involved and... Is she in relation to Stephanie Meyer? I don't think so. I, d I didn't really look into that too much, but not that I'm aware of. So has Stephanie Meyer written anything since she wrote... Well, she'd ri she wrote Twilight and then she'd written a book called The Host. Okay. Um, which was about aliens taking over Earth. And then I actually found another book called The Chemist that she wrote. I just found it in the bargain bin, and I that picked it up. That doesn't say much. Well, shop clothes are going out of business. <laughs> That's so true. They have cheap books. Um, so I purchased <laughs> that, but I haven't read it yet. It's on my growing to be read pile, which doesn't diminish. <laughs> it just keeps growing. So I'm hoping to get to that sometime. But otherwise, I, I was wondering, too, for a while. I just started looking... Kind of, I was getting ready to look into her website to see if she had written anything, and then I saw this on a shelf. Okay. So, um, I think so. I think there was a there was a re-release of 
the Twilight book too that came out for some one, some anniversary of it. I think the ten year anniversary or something. Remember how big those books were? They were like yes. Harry Potter back then. Sort of until the movies came out, and then they were not Harry Potter. No, <laughs> <laughs> movies didn't do well, or they did well. Uh, I don't remember. They're not good. Oh, <laughs> they don't have Paul Newman, do they? <laughs> no, they don't. And like when they were coming out, they always came out right around June thirtieth. So okay. Becca and I had both read the books, and so she that would that became sort of her birthday present to me for a couple of years. She would just we would go and see the movies together, and every time she would be like, "If it wasn't for the fact that I looked forward to coming to you with this, I don't know why we're seeing this in theaters," because they're too. They're just, I mean, I think it's one of those movies that down, down the road is going to be sort of like a kind of culty classic maybe, but it'll be, it's one that you like, you just watch because you've seen, you read the books. Were the movies <laughs> as good as the book? No. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> no. And I mean, sometimes, some, there's, the books were pretty good. I liked them. There was one where... That was the one where I was reading the book and I didn't like what happened and I threw the book across the room. There you go. And then Becca told me I was overreacting and then a week <laughs> later when she was reading it, she also threw the book. So. Did you point out to her that she was I over did. I said, you're overreacting. And what did she say? She didn't like that. <laughs> so did you read, what were the other ones that were big then? There was um, the ones with Lawrence was in the movies. Cat, cat kiss, or she was Katniss. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, uh, what were Hunger those Games. Books? Hunger Games. Oh yeah, did mm -hmm. you read those? I did read the books. Um, I haven't seen all of the movies. Were though. the movies good? I've only seen the first two, and they were pretty good. Oh okay, yeah. so they lived up to their billing. Yeah, I mean there were some differences, but it's one of those things where Tom doesn't like going to see movies with me when I've read the book. Because I apparently I make an audible noise when something doesn't match. <laughs> like, oh. I, I guess I must like, or I sigh or something because he wouldn't even watch Game of Thrones with me. And that was, we were like three minutes into the first episode and it already, <laughs> already was veering off down the road. So, yeah. But I think that's, that's just sort of a book lover problem. You, I know. And I don't, I, mm -hmm. I never have figured out. Okay. So. You take a best-selling book that millions of people mm -hmm. have read, literally millions of people. So yeah. let's change it and let's change the ending. Yeah. Now, what part of that is a good idea? Yeah. Well, I saw, uh, it was a post on Facebook where somebody said um, the highest needed job in Hollywood is called a professional book slapper. So somebody, every time anybody tries to say, change something in the book, you just go up and smack them with the book across the back of the head. <laughs> that would be a good So job I know though. the book says this, but let's do this. Whack! Just to keep it true. You know, that was the thing with Harry Potter that they, to a degree, I think they did a pretty good job. Until the fourth one. Oh, is that when they went south? That went off on its whole own thing. Oh. <laughs> I might have quit reading the books by then. <gasps> Don't say that. I might, I'm not sure. Have you not finished the Harry Potter books? No, I read them all at one point. I was, actually... I was going to say, we may have to reconsider this whole family relationship <laughs> thing if you haven't finished Harry Potter. The, the, only, the thing with those movies, though, is I didn't like that they'd split. You know, we're all about making money, right? So let's split these books into mm -hmm. two movies. And I well, will never get over that last one when Hogwarts was under attack. And let's let's cut the budget when we could really do some great stuff yeah, here. That's true, but lame, lame, lame. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> movies never live up to it. No, I'm not, only so. a few times. And, and I have to say, I'm drawing a blank right now on a movie that lived up to its book. I think we've talked about this before, and I think we normally draw a blank. <laughs> So, um, if you have any thoughts on movie adaptations that live up to the book, let us know. Talk, you'll find us on Facebook or Twitter, or send us an email at offtheshelfbooktalk at gmail.com. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.